When I was at school, I was quite good at science, but I didn't really understand how it related to me. I couldn't see myself working as a scientist, so I dropped it. But now I've started to realise I was being a little naive. Science relates to everything. It's about life, how we look at things, make things, think about things. And it's also got enormous creative potential. Learning science is not just for people who want to wear a lab coat to work, so I'm excited to be meeting a bunch of brilliant people with a whole range of fascinating careers to see where science plays a part in their job. You'd be forgiven for thinking that this is a catwalk show at London's Fashion Week, but it's not. It's far more revolutionary. The fashion on display is showcasing a trend that could be about to change the way we manufacture forever. This is the London 3D Print Show, and most of the designs have been made using just a computer and printer. It's called 3D Printing. One of the collections on that catwalk was the work of international shoe designer Brian Oknyansky, an architect who makes shoes from his bedroom. Instead of printing with ink, 3D printers print with a solid material. And for his shoes, Brian uses metals and high-grade plastics. It looks great, but Brian, as a woman, can I walk in it? Absolutely. Really? It might be shocking that uh, the shoes look uh, different in the way that they're structured, but actually they follow the same principles as traditional shoes, only I'm taking a lot more risks with the aesthetics because of the opportunities that 3D printing allows me. Are they comfortable though? All the models tell me they're comfortable and I don't even have to ask. Really? Yeah. They are brilliant. It's a bit mind-blowing to think they actually come out of a printer. Hint, hint. Hint, hint. Well, how would you like me to make you a pair of heels? <laughs> Let's do it! <laughs> So this is it then, Brian? This is the 3D printer. So, you are going to make me a shoe. It's going to be the coolest shoe. <laughs> you can take it everywhere with you. <laughs> How do you go about doing this? How do you go about getting size for somebody when you're making the perfect shoe? What I'd prefer to do is really take a 3D scan of your foot, and then there's no guesswork, because right. I'm designing purely for the, the geometry of your specific foot. So it would just be a perfect fit for me? Just for you. That's It'll be great. what I call a fingerprint shoe, just for you. Brian's shoes are first fashioned in a computer-aided design package. It's here he creates the look and calculates the position and strength of the heel. Understanding structures is something Brian brings to shoe design from his training as an architect. Looks nice. I could see myself wearing that shoe. I can see you wearing it as well. <laughs> but sadly, there's no chance I'm going to be able to wear it. And now we're ready to print. We don't have time to print a full-size one, so this is just going to be a teeny tiny scale model of one of his designs. Now how is this going to make the shoe? These reels of plastic filament gets fed through a feed tube all the way up to its respective extruder. There are loads of different 3D printer machines already on the market, and essentially they all work by heating the desired material to melting point then depositing molten material exactly where the computer design tells it to. The material cools or is hardened by chemical reaction and another is placed on top of it. Through this continuous layering, the final object is built from its bottom up. 3D printing allows complicated structures to now be built as easily and cheaply as simple ones. Every print can be 100% identical and manufacturing can take place practically anywhere which for Brian means he can make his range of shoes from home. And this is only the beginning of what 3D printing will be able to do. Will there be a possibility that there won't just be three reels of plastic at the bottom? They could be maybe fabric, could be rubber, could be breathable material, so we could print off kind of a pair of trainers. Absolutely. Not only the printing of multiple materials, but multiple material strengths. So your story is you started as an architect. So why did you get into shoes then? Shoe design has been a big interest to me. I am still making a building. It's a building for you. It's a building to hold you up. All those maths and physics apply to the making of the shoes as well. Being a shoe designer, it gets kind of glamorous then, doesn't it? It's great to be included in the fashion shows and everything. Of course, the, the aim in my career is uh, to create things that will be used by other people. Mm -hmm. 
But you do like all the glamorous side now, though, don't you? Is that what you're trying to tell me? <laughs> That's exactly what I'm trying to say. <laughs> so, is that ready? Is that my shoe? That's your shoe. Is it hot? It's not too hot to the touch. Oh, listen to that. Is that a proper shoe? Absolutely. Uh, the way that this shoe is designed, uh, if you scale it up, it will actually work. It's really, really lovely. And so then, on top of this, you would add the straps and whatever fabric. Absolutely, yeah. That is a very beautiful shoe. And I have to say... I think it's your size. The day when 3D printers are as common in the home as a TV or computer may not be that far away. To me, that sounds like a whole load of career opportunities just opening up at this new interface of design and technology.